I'm Nick Altmeyer with LinkingLewisCounty.com. We're here this morning at Lewis County Search and Rescue and we have got Chief Operating Officer Josh Levesque here and he's going to explain a little bit about an upcoming basic EMT course that's going to be going on here at, at Search and Rescue. So first off Josh, uh, do you just want to explain to people what a basic EMT course is? Uh, so the basic EMT course is just that. It is a entry level into emergency medicine. Um, the basic EMT course is a course that, that teaches individuals um, many of the body systems uh, that we typically see on a day to day. The, uh, the, we're we're going to teach them um, how to deal with respiratory emergencies, uh, allergy emergencies, um, uh, how to prepare for cardiac emergencies, things of that nature. Um, it, it, it also gives them a base knowledge of, uh, as I stated before, the body systems and how the body functions and how we take care of, of uh, our sick uh, community members. Okay, so what kind of people are you looking for in this course? Are, are, are people need to have like previous medical experience or anything like that? So no, previous medical experience is not necessary. Um, we're looking for people that, uh, that really want to help their community. Um, so on, on two standards, uh, on the medical side, we're looking for people that are willing to come in and learn how to treat emergencies in their, in their community and uh, help people that are sick. It goes uh, as far as what basic EMTs treat and what they deal with on a day-to-day -day basis is it's not always the horrible emergency. Some days um, the older population sometimes uh, you know may kneel down on the floor they just can't get up they need somebody to help them up. Um, it can be as simple as that to our unfortunate active uh, you know our accidents such as ATV and car accidents and, and things of that nature. So people that are willing to uh, and, and want to go out in their communities and help those people in, in their time of need that's what we're looking for. Um, and that's on the on the medical side. Um, on the volunteer side as a whole, we also need people to drive those ambulances. So in, it's not just it's not just here at Search and Rescue. It is a volunteer uh, situation issue throughout. Um, so your volunteer agencies, such as you know um, you know where I come from, Lions Falls area, the Southern Lewis County, all the way to the north, um, we all need those people to help to drive and, and to provide. So we're really looking for a wide uh, wide variety of people, just people that are looking to help their communities. Okay, and. This course isn't just for EMTs for Lewis County Search and Rescue either. So if you're at a volunteer agency that has an ambulance service such as Turin, Constable, Lions Falls, places like that, you can take the course here and still go back and volunteer at your agency? Absolutely correct. Um, the course is just being held here. Um, what we're trying to do um, is, is provide uh, the catalyst to train individuals to put them back out in the field. So it doesn't matter where you're from. You could be from Oneida County, Jefferson County, County, wherever you come here you take the class you take that education that we have provided you go back to your your home agency and and you volunteer there absolutely okay. and if you currently belong to an agency already but maybe you're not an EMT yet or, or something like that um, there's there's no cost for the class if you're already part of an agency is that correct uh, to some extent the class itself is free if you're part of a, a an, AB, uh, um, uh, an ambulance agency um, you're going to have a, a small cost with uh, your your books and uh, we ask uh, there's some some equipment such as uh, uh, blood pressure cuffs stethoscope you know maybe notebooks things like that but that those are the only cost to the, the student that is part of an ambulance company okay and then those are, are things that you'll keep uh, as you move forward as an EMT as well Correct. okay and what kind of uh, time commitment are people looking at for taking a class like that so what what are the dates the class runs and uh, the hours wonderful so yeah the the class this year is starting August 17th so it's, it's coming up very quickly um, it ends uh, the, the tentative test date right now is uh, December 17th um, so about about four months uh, we're gonna do uh, Monday and Wednesdays uh, from 6 p.m to 9:30 in the evening so hopefully uh, you know those that those that are working can get there and, and join us for this class there's going to be a couple Saturdays that are peppered in um, to do CPR and, and some some labs and things like that um, and it, it's not a it's not uncommon to have a couple extra days in there if, if uh, you know for study days things like that if people want 
Okay. So I'm assuming there's a certain amount of training hours that people have to meet to, to get that EMT certification as well as passing the test. So yeah, we the, the course uh, as approved through our course sponsor, which is out of Jefferson County, requires, and the state requires a certain number of hours. Mm -hmm. So um, we have put together a course that meets that requirement. So we, we, we have to meet uh, X number of didactic and, and lab hours. Um, of what we, uh, that's how the course is designed. Um, outside of that, once you've come in and you've taken the course, that'll satisfy all the hours you need to test, um, as long as you've fulfilled all the obligations. Uh, once you've test, you know, you, you go out and you join your agency, and depending on the agency, um, not to get off a little on it, but once you get outside of that, you've got your EMT card, now you go through a clearing process, typically through any agency, and what that is, is we've taught you everything you need to know to be an EMT. Now your preceptors in the field are going to teach you what you need to know more specifically about maybe the county you're operating in or the ambulance you're operating in or the demographics of where, where you're at. Okay. And um, after you have your EMT card, is it is it like a, a one and done and now you're an EMT for life or what, what kind of... What goes into keeping that status uh, active? Sure, so uh, once you become an EMT, I mean, it, it, it would be nice if it was one and done, but unfortunately in our career, we need to constantly be uh, learning. We need to constantly be uh, um, um, educating ourselves. So we have to research. Uh, the state requires us to research our cards every three years. Uh, there's a couple of ways we can do that. Um, the first and, and probably the simplest and most common way is uh, through a CME or Continuing Medical Education course or uh, recertification of which you would attend conferences um, or do online training one of those two um, so the conferences we typically have one in the spring uh, held by uh, uh, Fort Drum Regional Health Planning Organization up there they do a fantastic job um, of which you get uh, credit hours uh, CME credit hours and then there's one out in uh, it's it's been in Lake Placid um, they need to change the venue for a couple years but that's another great one so you go out and you go to these um, these venues uh, take the uh, seminars and the the greatest part about those seminars is it's cutting edge so they're bringing in fantastic uh, presenters from um, from all over um, individuals like Kelly Grayson uh, who travels around the United States and, and is a fantastic presenter you get to see uh, his view so you get those credit hours um, and and then once uh, you've obtained the credit hours uh, you would submit that to the state and the state will renew your card for another three years okay so anybody that is interested in uh, finding out more information on the upcoming course or signing up for the upcoming course how would they go about uh, doing that so the easiest way uh, is to call uh, base here at 315-376-7745 and um, tell the, the ladies here in the office that you're interested in taking the course. They'll take your information and we'll get you signed up and on the list. Um, the, the way it's laid out now is once you uh, call up, you get signed up. It's at about uh, the two week mark, about when we're two weeks from class. Uh, we're gonna send you a welcome email with, all, with your packet and everything that you need to have for the first night of class. And then uh, we'll see everybody the first night. Okay. And we did kind of touch on it a little bit, uh, but just for people that are wondering, um, if, if EMT maybe isn't your thing, but you would still like to volunteer with the agency or give something back to search and rescue, um, there are other opportunities here for volunteers. So everything from office work, billing, things like that. Um, like you said, driving the ambulance. So those are all things that you don't necessarily need the basic EMT card for, but there's always a need to help you guys out. So there is, um, and what we've done in the last year, and I, you, you hit the nail right on the head. Um, so some people are not built to handle the emergency setting. It makes them nervous and things like that, but they want to give back to their community. So we have um, established the auxiliary as well. A lot like a fire department auxiliary, what we identified is that there's people in the community that want to help. Um, so we, 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 we brought together this auxiliary with the purpose of helping the providers and drivers whose boots are on the ground promote Lewis County Search and Rescue so people know what we do. We don't want people to be scared or nervous with us. Um, we want to make sure that they're comfortable um, to go out and, and, and um, help get into the, the schools uh, so kids are, are aware and, and that awareness in the community. The auxiliary also helps with chicken barbecues and some fundraising for uh, instances such as EMS Week. Every, every year we have EMS Week 
and we like to do something very special for our providers to thank them for all the time and effort they put in. So the auxiliary helps by doing some fundraising to get to give back to them for that period too. So, yeah, there's you can drive, uh, you can you can be an EMT in the back, uh, you can join the auxiliary. Uh, there's many options here at Search and Rescue to help and give back to your community. So if people take the EMT course, get their EMT certification and things like that, um, what's the process like to volunteer at Search and Rescue? Is there a minimum amount of hours that you that you have to volunteer per week? Is it per month? How do you guys do that? So we're very flexible. Um, we ask for full membership, and full membership will include um, uh, the opportunity to you know vote for our board of directors and 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 join us in in uh, the events we may put on outside. Like, uh, on a regular basis, we have a water safari day and we may have other opportunities. So uh, for full membership, we ask people to give us 16 hours a month. But we're very flexible in how they go about doing it. Um, while we would prefer full shifts because it's easier for our schedule, we know that people have lives as well and, and we work around that. So um, if you can give us 16 hours a month, that's full membership, we greatly appreciate it. Not that it's limited to 16. So those that want to give more, absolutely. Um, if, you're, if you're thinking you may want to get into EMS but not sure, and you want to start out as a driver um, our crews are fantastic these guys will teach you and show you and and guide you through everything so that's full membership we also have um, an associate membership program um, of which there isn't a specific hour requirement however so so we developed that one because there was people that wanted to help but certain times of the year couldn't so they couldn't meet their 16 hours. So we went to associate membership, and that just, it simply is you don't have the voting rights, you don't have all the fringe benefits of being a full uh, search and rescue member, but you're still a search and rescue member. So you're still welcome here. You're still able to uh, come and donate your time and help. Um, uh, you just don't have to put those 16 hours in as a regular basis. And finally is the auxiliary. So you can come in, uh, they meet once a month. Um, they put together uh, uh, some events and things like that, and you can you can volunteer that way. So volunteering here is uh, is is fairly simple. It's got a wide variety for for people that you know as far as what they can and can't do. Um, pretty easy. Okay. And I know it's not just here in Lewis County or New York State particularly. It's a it's it's something we see across the country. So can you just talk about the importance of the need for volunteer EMPs? And we'll end with that. I would, I would absolutely love to. So um, in this day and age, uh, our lives are very, very busy. Um, and situations now, you know, are more complex. So uh, the need for, for volunteerism as a whole, whether it be providers or it be drivers or it be, you know, firefighters is significant. Um, we're seeing a significant uh, decrease in the amount of people willing to vol volunteer their time. And a lot of that comes from the fact that, that there's more requirements on how many hours you have to upkeep so as we talked earlier Nick we talked about the uh, the every three years you have to recertify your card which means you have to add more hours to go to conferences and things like that it's tough for people raising families and whatnot so it's difficult so volunteerism has dropped off however the need for those volunteer uh, individuals has increased exponentially so we, we kind of have a we, we've got a problem we got fewer people doing more work so the need for people is is significant and that's why you know we we reach out and um, we, we have a lot of programs to help people through and become volunteers and that's why we teach the EMT course here um, is, is, is to try to boost those numbers all right well we appreciate your time this morning Josh and kind of explaining about what the course is and why the need for volunteers is so important so once again uh, anyone that's interested in taking the course can call the number on your screen or Josh uh, what's that number again 315-376-7745 all right